everybody. This is the special meeting of the Energy and Environment uh, Committee. This is Tuesday, June 8th, and it's about 5 after 9 a.m. in the morning. We are in room 1050. <laughs> Sorry, what excuse me. Um, Mr. CLA, uh, are there any consent items on the calendar today? Yes, there are. We'd like to recommend for consent item number two, mm -hmm. three, as well as items, item number five. Two, three, and item number four. Two rel uh, relates to a, a yeah. grant, for, uh, EAD grant, yeah. and the uh, heat relief for LA program. Number three relates to a uh, also EAD grant uh, associated with the um, local enforcement agency program. And number five relates to a grant of an easement to the County Vigno for Let's airport see. purposes. Uh, Dr. Williams filled out a card on five. Dr. Williams, do you still want to speak on item number five? I'll wait. All right. I, okay. All right. That's fine. You that's great, thank you. And then uh, let's see, then that leaves us with items one and four. Yes. Why don't we take up four right now? Okay. DWP report relative to an agreement with Open Systems International to provide software maintenance and technical support services. Who's here to report on that? Good morning, Kenneth Silver. Manager of Energy Control and Extra High Voltage Stations, Department of Water and Power. Uh, this is a contract. To, this is to amend a contract for with Open Systems International. Uh, they were the supplier of our SCADA system, the uh, Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System that we use for monitoring and controlling the power system. Um, it performs our automatic generation control, uh, alarm processing, monitoring of the system. Um, and it's uh, vital for the reliable operation of the system and for meeting all of our NERC and regulatory requirements relative to operating the power system. Uh, the funding is from our normal um, operating and maintenance uh, budget. Is it from the power revenue fund or the water revenue power, fund? It's from the power revenue fund. And is that how the $9.2 million uh, uh, for the contract will be covered? Yes. Okay. And, and, and for a total of five years? Five, it's a five-year, yes. It's, it's uh, overall five years, one year with four one-year extensions. Okay. And all comes from power revenue? That is correct. Okay. Uh, well, can't, I can only, so there's nobody here to, we don't, have a, we don't have a quorum, so. We could hold it until you get a quorum. Yeah, why don't I hold it and see what happens, see if somebody else shows up. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That was four. Okay. Uh, and that just leaves us with one on the agenda. So why don't I go back to the speaker cards. Um, and Dr. Williams, we also con continue too, but uh, we're trying to uh, make a little time here. So why don't you come up and, and you can have three minutes and talk about items two, five, public comment. Uh, to expedite things. Uh, oh, no, no, take your time. <laughs> I do. Uh, Dr. Clyde Williams, 4115 Barrett Road, El Sereno, Northeast LA. More trees, sounds good. Except for one thing, we can't even plant enough to meet the million trees. So we're only around 4,000 behind each and every year. So I would suggest that either they get on the stick and get a lot more trees in or work with the Board of Public Works who has a replacement ratio but never can quite get up to finding places to put the trees. So having the trees is one thing. Getting them in the ground and maintaining them and having somebody take responsibility for the watering is a very different thing. So unless you're going to do uh, full maintenance of these trees, uh, there should be some provision in the general fund for operations and maintenance of the trees, including tree trimming and irrigation. So why take on something that can't be maintained? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, uh, that was your, the, that's, that's it? All right. You got one. You still have one you can talk about. Well, we're not on one yet, but you did fill out a card on one. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. So. Okay. What the heck? Let's go to one. Okay. All right. Number one. All right. Let's let Dr. Williams speak after you do. Sure. Okay. Sorry. One. This one's an easy one. 
somewhat like just now, uh, we have a problem with water and we have a problem with power line. If you look at some of the elements within the budget, there's not enough replacement of ancient riveted steel pipe and all sorts of other things. A half a percent per year, that means these facilities are scheduled to last for 200 years. Wow, that seems a little excessive. Why is the rate so low for replacement? And why is it getting worse? It's not getting better based upon this budget. Which goes back to a central issue. There is no strategic plan for the nation's largest municipally owned utility. No strategic plan. They've been studying it for a while, but why is it that it can't be completed? Because how can you really do an effective budget, and sometimes they make reference to long-term in there, and it's really not long-term because we don't know where we're going. We don't know how we're going to get there. The whole issue with coal replacement, which seems to have kind of fallen off the side, uh, is a real issue. It can't be done by wind and solar. That's one of the basic problems. Okay, in the whole thing, there's mentioning of conservation twice or three times. In fact, they've had a requ request to extend the previous conservation because the outreach and the actual implementation of their conservation rebates and such like that is so tragic. There's not enough outreach. So why isn't there more outreach? Well, they've held the budget to some particular number. So they have the rates. The rates is a sheet in there. Sometimes it says, well, it'll be raised quarterly by 3% quarterly? That seems a little excessive. But it's also a matter that uh, somebody apparently didn't QA it or QC it because if you look for the expenses, you won't find expenses except as total expenses. They have revenues. Oh, yeah, we always have revenues. But there's no expenses header. So uh, my basic problem is it's a sloppy job. It should be sent back. Conservation should since conservation achieved far more than they thought it was going to on water, it should be emphasized more and specially separated, spelled out exactly as to what's going to happen. I would request a quarterly review in relationship to the proposed strategic plan, if it ever comes about. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. All right, so now we're on item one. and. Um, I don't know how you want to handle this if Mr. Putin wants to speak first or, or do the presentation or however you want to do this. Whenever uh, we could go through a presentation, we have a okay. brief presentation. Um, and I'll do that and it would take me about 10 minutes to get through. Okay. I'll try to go through quickly and then be delighted to answer. Do we need questions. the lights down or? I hope I don't want to fall asleep with the lights down. <laughs> Just a little, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's good, that's good. Then you don't have to turn them all off. Well, okay. Okay, never mind. Uh, I would say leave the middle ones off so you can have the contrast and then you can still see. Yeah, then you can see. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Good morning and, and thank you, uh, Councilman, for having us. As we get into this, you'll hear us discuss and me discuss a budget is really a chance to identify what your priorities are and what resources you do to have to achieve them with, and uh, this discussion is an attempt to uh, frame those. Who's going to scroll through this? There we go. Uh, what we do, hopefully reliable, safely, and affordably provide water and power in an environmentally responsible manner, and we'll do it with transparency and accountability for, and financial discipline for the benefit of both our customers and the City of Los Angeles. Uh, page two, <clears throat> this is important. Uh, since I've been at the department in the last month, we've developed an action plan of things that we wish to accomplish this year. Uh, this is the first piece, which is a revised budget for our fiscal year 2010-11. There's a companion piece, which we'll talk about uh, with you early next week, which is our strategic plan. 
the strategic plan will identify longer term uh, where we expect to source power from, water from, identify some of the issues and challenges we face. We will also propose at that time a simplified rate structure, uh, taking into consideration ECAF and how we can uh, make simpler both our power and water rates and more understandable to our customers. Uh, it is likely we will revise our budget further at that time. Uh, we're continuing the search for additional resources uh, that we can mitigate any expected rate increases. Uh, so our final word will be given at that time. It's important to look at this budget presentation together with the piece next week because the two tie. Uh, ideally, we do them at the same time, but to be honest with you, in a month we've only been trying to catch up and get ahead of some of these issues. At the same time, we have undertaken a business and financial review, which we expect to complete during the course of this fiscal year. We're going to look at customer service issues, our costs, our information systems, supply chain management, risk management, how we have invested in renewables and what our plan is going forward. And we'll look at our balance sheet, and in particular, we'll look and see and have a, uh, a further view on exactly the cash balance we need to maintain in the business to operate it. That's ongoing. Uh, for instance, we have already put out an RFP on the real estate side, uh, first defining what is core and necessary in the operations of our business. Uh, for that which is not core or necessary, we're going to seek to, pr to partner that real estate in the private sector, and anything that can be sold or turned to cash obviously can mitigate any rate impacts. Uh, lastly, we continue to be in support of a rate payer advocate, and we will have a proposal uh, for our board uh, on that topic next week. So four parts we're working actively on all those. A bit on the size and scale DWP, uh, with which you are familiar, but it's worth reminding ourselves. Uh, the scope and scale of this business affects people in seven states, four million people, and it's a big and complex business. Our financial statement, uh, just in gross terms, it's not far off from the size of the general fund budget of the city as a whole. I've noted with the red circles uh, where a lot of this conversation will focus on is the different components. The purchase power, fuel, and water are third-party costs we pass through. Those have very little variability or very little within our control. Over the long term, we do control labor materials and depreciation, meaning the effect of our capital costs. Uh, but that drives off the number at the bottom. We will spend about a billion and a half dollars this year in capital. It's the long-term capital decisions uh, which mostly form the basis for future rate actions if necessary. Uh, and if we spend those monies wisely, we can mitigate the impact of any future rate increases. On the power system side, <clears throat> what are our priorities? Reliability, maintaining regulatory compliance, beginning the, and continuing the transition of where we generate power not only to replace aged infrastructure, uh, but to reduce our carbon emissions and increase our investments in renewable energy, all in maintaining a financial position that is stable. I'll talk a little bit about pole replacement. It's a proxy for the work we have to do in the system to make it more reliable. What I would note there is that more than half of our poles are more than 50 years old, 50 or 60 years being a proximate useful life of that asset. Uh, poles is a proxy for all of the other things you do at that same time, replace transformers and conduits and the like. Uh, we're increasing our investment in those. Ideally, we'd have more resources with which to do. Obviously, we have to temper, uh, especially in this economic environment, where we can afford to charge. I would also comment that o underheading or undergrounding uh, anything that is overhead is about five times more expensive. So uh, we're often requested to look at different aspects of that, but it costs us about five times the amount of money to underground something as maintaining it overhead. Cable replacement, similar picture. <laughs> uh, we're spending dramatically more than we did five or ten years ago. Uh, this is a complex part of our business. About two-thirds of our outages come from our lines, meaning where they're overheaded or where they're underground. Uh, so the investments in both maintaining uh, infrastructure overhead and upgrading reliability underground uh, will address two-thirds of our outages. A frame of reference we look at in measuring this is the average interruptions per customer. This means in Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles, an average customer experienced slightly less than one interruption per year. Uh, we included the other figures as a frame of reference. Uh, they're not particularly dispositive. PG&E, for instance, has a far more rural service territory. You'd expect uh, more outages than ours. I think the most important aspect of this is the trend. Uh, we need to continue to drive that 0.78 lower. Uh, that's a figure we should look at on an annual basis. Regulatory compliance. <coughs> uh, 
this is probably the single biggest uncontrollable portion of our costs, meaning these regulations are not something that are city regulations, they are state or federal regulations. Uh, the air quality regulations I'm sure you're familiar with, they were uh, uh, based on an agreement reached between the city uh, and the South Coast Air Quality Management District in 2003. We're continuing to replace in-basin generation. You will see a Haines repowering this year, for instance, about $250 million, which ties directly to that agreement that's been in place. I'll talk about greenhouse gas for a moment, then I'll come back to local water. Uh, greenhouse gas, AB 32, uh, those are still to be determined. Uh, that is a, a regulation that is uh, ever-changing, but certainly it's going to cause us to need to reduce our carbon and increase our investment in renewables. We'll come back and have a broader conversation about that next week when we present our strategic plan. A particular issue that's become acute and timely for discussion is the local water issues, uh, otherwise referred to as once through cooling. Uh, the State Water Board has just issued, as of May of this year, a set of restrictions which will cause us to no longer use ocean water to cool our turbines. Uh, any turbine is not 100 percent efficient. There is some heat loss in generating energy that can either be dissipated in the atmosphere or the air uh, or reduced uh, by using cold ocean water. Cold ocean water has been the norm up and down the state. Uh, this is a regulation adopted as of May of this year. Obviously, it's been in practice or been in the works for quite some time. Uh, the estimate on cost, this $1.7 billion, I think, is actually conservative. We're trying to revise that. We're scrambling to catch up with this one. This is one where it uh, should have been addressed probably several years ago. Uh, but to give you some order of magnitude, if this billion seven turns out to be an accurate number, that alone would cause us to need to increase rates $150 million or 5 percent. So 5 percent rate increase on the electric side solely due to one state regulation. Uh, we have an informed audience with us, but I challenge anyone to name one member of the State Water Board, probably not uh, other than obviously the councilman who would know. Uh, but this is an example of the type of regulation we have little control over but makes an enormous impact in our business. This doesn't make us cleaner. It doesn't make us greener. It doesn't provide jobs. Uh, it's just an additional cost burden we have to bear. We will continue to update you as changes emerge on that. Just noting the sources of energy, uh, again, we are heavily coal dependent. Uh, that is the greatest source of our carbon emissions. Uh, whether we wish to reduce our carbon or not, we have an aging coal infrastructure, so we have to look at investing in those plants one way or the other. <clears throat> in the power budget itself, it's about three quarters of our $4.2 billion at top line. 3.3 billion of that is, comes from the power side. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have roughly equivalent amounts of fixed costs, i.e. purchase power, purchase fuel from others, and costs we can control over time, labor materials and, and depreciation, which is a function of our capital. The investment this year uh, will be roughly three quarters into reliability. Uh, that's the poles, cables, generation equipment, smart grid and other investments, uh, and about a quarter of that is regulatory. Uh, again, with things like once through cooling, you'll expect to see over time that regulatory number becoming much, much larger unless we can do things to mitigate that or work with the state. Credit and cash flow of the system. Uh, we generate almost $900 million. Uh, after operating expense, we pay interest. We pay current maturities of our debt. We pay the city transfer of $254 million, uh, less the billion of capital, which will cause us to borrow uh, approximately an additional $900 million. You'll see at the bottom of the page total cash of $953 million. We expect to speak to that number next week uh, as to why we need it or don't need it uh, and what we think the manageable cash balance is for a business of this open scale. There's a lot of talk about the debt service coverage number. I thought I'd just put it on the page for explanation. It's that $890 million figure divided by both interest expense and current maturities of debt. Uh, we managed to a two and a quarter target. That is the target the rating agencies wish us to maintain to maintain our AA rating. On the water side, our priorities, regulatory compliance again, infrastructure reliability, developing local water resource through recycling, conservation, uh, and uh, further developing local resources, and maintaining financial stability. Uh, I'll use mainline replacement here as a proxy for reliability of the system. This is a picture we prefer to see, which is proactive maintenance as opposed to a fire truck parked in the hole. Uh, you'll see that 64% of our lines are greater than 50 years. 
Again, the proxy for useful life here is meaningfully higher than 50 years, but you'll see we have an aging system. Uh, and compared to five or 10 years ago, we've dramatically increased the amount of investment we're putting into the system. Again, in a perfect world, we'd invest more than $42 million, but we don't have room, we believe, for any further rate action there. On the regulatory side, these two major items on the water side are both old and cold in the sense that they have existed for some time, but the capital and the costs are just now coming into our budget in a meaningful way. It's about a billion six to maintain a positive pressure closed system, meaning from river mouth all the way to customer, positive pressure and closed, which means we have to close our remaining reservoirs. Uh, and at the same time, we're switching from chlorine to chloramine that allows us to swap water uh, more readily with other water districts, uh, which will allow us to actually reduce the amount of future capital expenditures. A sense where our water comes from, uh, about half right now from MWD, a little more than a third from the Los Angeles Aqueduct, meaning the Owens River Valley, uh, local groundwater. I'd note, and we'll talk again more about this next week, uh, one reason, the, or two reasons the Los Angeles Aqueduct are down. One is uh, because of variations in snowpack, but the more important number is uh, more than a third of our water in the Owens Valley now stays in the valley uh, in the form of mitigation and other things. We're spending about $70 million a year uh, in that neck of the woods, and we'll talk up again about that next week. <coughs> Local water resource development between water recycling, the so-called purple pipe, uh, where what we're doing is taking wastewater, uh, purifying it further and using it for things like golf courses and certain industrial uses that don't require uh, potable water. Uh, we have to date uh, put those in place uh, near, very near water treatment plants. Over time, we expect purple pipes to extend throughout the city, which is why we're working on a master plan that will in effect become a parallel water system throughout the city over time. That's very expensive but very necessary as we can use recycled water for that. We're working on conservation uh, through conservation methods, both price signals uh, and rules this year. We have saved more than a quarter of the water used, otherwise used. Uh, that's equivalent to more than the water used in Long Beach and Santa Monica. On the water budget, <coughs> excuse me, again, about 500 million are long-term controllable costs in the form of labor. Uh, materials and depreciation. Uh, capital on this side is roughly equally split between maintaining our infrastructure uh, and regulatory. Uh, regulatory, you'll see, grow meaningfully as we begin to further comply uh, with the requirements there. Uh, same coverage here, $350 million available for debt service. Uh, after interest, debt, and capital investment, we'll need to borrow about $380 million. Uh, which gives us an ending balance of about $200 million on the water system. Same algorithm for coverage ratio. You'll see the target here being 2.0 rather than 2.25. Uh, the principal difference here is there is no city transfer from the water side, uh, so the regulators allow us, uh, or the debt rating agencies allow us a slightly different coverage. I'll talk a little bit about our workforce. Uh, it is uh, one of our great assets of this business. Uh, unlike uh, certain other uh, businesses the city is in, certain other services the city is in, we need a very highly qualified workforce within which to do our work. Uh, linemen, for instance, uh, are highly sought after nationwide. It takes about three years to train them. We invest about a quarter of a million dollars to train an individual lineman. Uh, and you'll note with the number nearing retirement uh, versus what we have in our vacancies, we have to continue to invest heavily in our workforce. Our level of operating and maintenance expense and people expense correlates to the level of projects, not to the level of volumes in our business. So water usage could go up and down in a year. Power usage could go up and down in a year. You'll see us fighting to maintain a workforce as we have more project activity. So to replace main lines and trunk lines, people correlate to that irrespective of the water use. We'll invest about $75 million on direct craft training. Uh, we'll invest about $25 million in safety. I would note that, unfortunately, in the history of the department, 218 people have lost their lives uh, in the conduct of their job. Uh, there's more people, actually, than have perished uh, in firefighting in the city. Uh, so training on safety is essential, uh, and we will continue to make those investments. Uh, changes, uh, you'll recall uh, the department presented a preliminary budget to uh, its commission and city council a few weeks ago. Since then, we have further reduced our cost, $263 million. 
those are 189 million of reductions, meaning uh, expenses or investments that we have determined we can do without. Uh, and we've deferred certain things uh, to later periods. All this has been done against the backdrop of not doing anything which impacts safety, reliability, uh, or our regulatory compliance. Customer service. Uh, the centerpiece of our relationship with our customers uh, is our billing system. Uh, we have a COBOL based system. Uh, COBOL, there's probably no one in this room who was alive when COBOL was the uh, prevailing uh, language of choice. Uh, I asked the obvious question when I started, why don't we bill every month? Well, it turns out we have a system that won't allow us to. As we move to a smart grid, we need a smart bill, uh, the ability to uh, bill not, uh, not only on a more timely basis, but in a more smarter basis to vary with price signal uh, based on day and date of usage, time of usage, amount of usage, and things like that uh, will match up against the investments we're making in a smart grid. Uh, we've authorized that expenditure that's underway. We expect the system change to be completed by 2012. In the interim, we're not standing still. We will be introducing later this year a new version of the existing bill to more clearly delineate what uh, the different fees and services are for. Uh, but wholesale change to be much more smart in our billing will take the new infrastructure we put in place. Uh, we continue to invest in things like water conservation uh, using federal stimulus grants and our own monies. Uh, and we will continue to increase our community outreach. Uh, we just held a meeting yesterday uh, with business uh, outreach types uh, to talk about our budget. We have a meeting tonight uh, in the Valley uh, with uh, neighborhood councils, and we'll do that several more times. We're also presenting uh, this budget to the full council later uh, today. Uh, rates. <clears throat> Uh, lacking 3D holograph capability, this is an attempt to summarize uh, what the rate picture looks like. I'll talk about each component separately. Uh, the 5% increase in ECAF was approved by uh, both the DWP Commission and Council. Uh, there is, in this financial plan, uh, an additional tenth of a cent per quarter increase in ECAF. Uh, we will have our recommendation on that next week as to whether we need that or don't need that, uh, but it remained in our financial plan since we haven't yet revised it uh, to tie into our long-term strategy. We will be, again, recommending at the same time a simplified rate structure. We believe almost all we do belongs in base rates, uh, and a fuel charge or pass-through of a commodity variation uh, should be the only piece detached uh, from regular rate making. Nothing else should be passed through. Uh, on the water side, uh, Suffice it to say, I've been there three or four weeks. I still can't explain in simple terms how water rates are calculated. Uh, that does need a 3D Venn diagram of some sort. Uh, if I were to simplify this, I would say that for a Tier 1 customer, it will be approximately 3% increase uh, this fiscal year. For a Tier 2 user, it will be approximately 8%. Uh, again, these are current period costs as a result of long-term decisions made uh, mostly to comply with regulatory compliance. So these are investments, these are reservoir covers, things like that, which were committed to a long time ago. Question we're asked often uh, for individual users. This is pro forma for the fiscal budget uh, that we are presenting. So the average residential monthly power bill is $67. You can look at each of the major components, whether it's about $9 for fuel or $5.25 for the city transfer. The information is all there, and people can understand where it goes. Uh, the next page is the same on the water side. Give you some sense of what the major components are. Uh, again, things like purchase water we pass through, uh, depreciation materials, other things over the long term we can control. Again, we're spending heavily for regulatory compliance. Uh, just to summarize, uh, so the team has been together now for about a month. Uh, we've developed an action plan, as I set forth in the first page. Uh, we found a way to cut an additional $190 million from our expenses as well as deferring 74. Uh, we will have a long-term plan uh, to discuss with you next week. Uh, we think that's probably the most important document as it identifies uh, really the long-term priorities and where our costs emanate from. Uh, we've begun a pretty extensive business review, and we will share uh, with both our commission, the public, uh, and this council body as progress is made there. Uh, and we will have a specific recommendation on rate pair advocate by next week. 
Yeah, great. Thank you, and welcome your questions. Okay, great. Can you uh, turn the lights back on? Um, let me uh, start with a question about the Debt Reduction Trust Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the likelihood that the city or the department could use these funds to offset future rate increases? Well, it's a good question. We're looking at that, and we'll have an answer for you next week. Okay, great. Um, the city's... Uh, Okay, other, the other key issues affecting water side of operations, those affecting rate increases, can you defer those given uh, well, lack of consensus on the legislative body, meaning the council? Have you given any thought to that? Uh, what we're trying to do is to see what other resources we have uh, because we don't want to slow down our investments in reliability. Uh, we do need to begin to chip away at our coal base, but uh, we're looking very, very hard to see if we can't come up with a plan for this year, which uh, does without any further increase. Okay. On the water pipeline replacement uh, question I have about prioritization, and I had not been able to get an answer in the past, do you prioritize replacement based on age or interruption or, or a com combination thereof? Uh, you know, we're both strategic and tactical. Uh, if it breaks, we have to fix it. Uh, if it hasn't broken, the department and Jim would be happy to comment. We have a long-term plan of where we are trying to address what we believe are weaknesses in the infrastructure, so it's a combination of both. Okay. Well, then why don't we put that, put a bookmark on that, and I have that as an extensive single item on another agenda, because I think we need to get more deeply into that. Um, and then, you know, obviously interruptions are always going to be given priority over age. Right. Yes, but because but they're an emergency. Yes, by so their we have a plan, and, and again, we can go through in, in as much detail as you wish a plan to ultimately uh, replace or upgrade the entire system, yeah. which each year we chip away at. At the same time, yeah. something breaks, we get out there and fix it. Yeah, and then uh, then in, in discussing that, and Mr. CLA, let's get that on the agenda. Uh, plan to upgrade, uh, always interrupted by emergencies. Um, what we can do in a more of an anticipatory way to possibly um, preempt emergencies. Uh, just example, the uh, watering schedule and dealing with the, uh, it was it the Turby School of Engineering and that simple recommendation, which I'm hoping against hope, uh, changes the outcomes uh, so that we don't have more uh, pipe failure uh, in the future. So let's, let's do that as a separate item. Um, Question about the DWP computer system. Uh, I, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Barbara Blinderman, I think I mentioned her to you. She was the uh, person who came in with this initial idea, and the department's been working very well with her. Uh, and she's kind of the ultimate demographic of uh, a user, a rate payer, who is uh, really seeking clarity and transparency on their bill. Um, I, I don't know as much about billing systems and things like that as you do, I'm sure, but now that we've switched over to Google here in the city and we're using the cloud technology and I know that that requires less uh, infrastructure investment, is that something that could be applied to the department and its billing system? Similar concept? Uh, you know, our, ours is a little more robust. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly we're looking at ways to um, minimize our technology investment or investing in things which would be quickly dated. Mm -hmm. Uh, but ours, simply put, is a lot more robust than what the Google app uh, provides for. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, I'm not so stuck on the Google app because yeah. I'm telling you it's not that <laughs> it's got its issues. But uh, the, just the concept of, you know, at the, just the very general generic cloud technology, uh, which doesn't require a lot of yeah, ramping up. Yeah, what we're up. doing in this, uh, and again, we'd be delighted to come make a separate presentation. Okay. We need a software system, a database system, which is more current, an Oracle or, or one of those vendors as opposed to COBOL, so in a different programming language. At the same time, we're going to avoid investing in infrastructure, storage, and other things, for instance, which become dated right. very, very quickly where we can outsource those. Okay. Why don't we make, put that on the checklist of things we have to follow up on. Um, your, your proposed, uh, your budget or your presentation calls for uh, cost and operation deferrals on the power and the water side. And have you done an analysis yet as to what that does to uh, exempt positions and labor positions? What we have in our budget um, uh, called for is a hiring freeze. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we will maintain that throughout the course of the fiscal year. The only exceptions will be for critical positions, for instance, uh, 
If I could hire another lineman, I would tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, we need them. Uh, but other than critical positions like that, we'll be doing no hiring in the department. Okay. Uh, okay. And um, the status of the DWP's undergrounding of power lines throughout the city, uh, the power reliability program and the base rate increases, were, which were approved about three years ago, I think, uh, the undergrounding of power lines was a critical feature of that. Um, and I think I mentioned to you in, in passing that, uh, you know, we were never able to get a report from the department on how much we have done per year and how much more needs to be done within, within any given time frame that we choose so we can at least demonstrate to the ratepayers that we've made progress and that we've been able to uh, compound that progress. Now, I, wanna, I guess I want to know is do we anticipate any cost deferrals in this program as part of your upcoming proposed budget and do you anticipate any base rate increases on the power side in the coming year to continue the program? We, we uh, in our budget, again, uh, we call for no base rate increase on the uh, electric side. Uh, we continue to invest in reliability heavily. Uh, if we can find additional resource without raising rates, we will increase that, and we'd be delighted, again, we have a presentation on that particular topic we could share with you on where we are in the reliability okay. program. All right, and then what we'll do, Mr. CLA, is make three separate motions so that we can go ahead and kick start it and put it through the process and agendize that because I think those deserve a, a more in-depth discussion. Um, uh, with regard to regulatory impacts, your presentation notes that a reduction or elimination of ocean water cooling of power plants could result in a uh, $1.7 billion cost. Now, if that is accurate, would how would the city and the ratepayers be affected? Uh, first, I caution this. It is a set of rules which have been adopted uh, only less than a month ago. Uh, while they're underway for many years, uh, less than a month ago we received the final. So the billion seven is a preliminary estimate. We're revising that. Expect to have better figures for you next week. Okay. If the billion seven were proved to be accurate, uh, that in and of itself would be $150 million a year our ratepayers would have to bear. It would be a 5% increase approximately, again, with no improvement or service or transition away from uh, fossil fuel to renewables or any of the other strategic objectives we have. So it's, it's uh, uh, of high concern to us. So if, if that does prove to be accurate, and when would it be? Um, you'll know by next week when you come back whether or not that's an accurate figure. Uh, it'll become more accurate. Uh, now what we are in active discussions at the state level to see what we can do to ameliorate some of that or to change deadlines or processes to comply. Uh, if we are caused to comply, that'll all come into our rate base within the next five to 10 year period in steps. So then when you come back, if you can extrapolate uh, the scenario for us and maybe outline what the five year uh, outcomes could be, what sure. adjustments we would need to make to. I'd, I'd, I would like to also do that in a 10 or 12 year time frame. Mm -hmm. I think one of the challenges in this business is what appears to be a very large number may not show up for a year or two and therefore uh, politically it might be easy to defer but the costs are real. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be the seventh year not the fifth year but we'll present you over the time okay, frame. Okay great that's fine. Ten, 10 years is even better. Yeah. Uh, and then the projected costs of any other regulatory issues that you believer on the horizon uh, would be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and on, on an ongoing basis, I think it's really important for the city, the council, and the department, this committee, uh, to work together to develop an integrated resources plan for the department related to operations and the use of renewables. So just generally speaking, can you give me some of your thoughts on that? Yes, we're going to present that next week. Okay. Uh, as well. Uh, so if it's okay, I'll defer till then and present. No, that's it. fine. And then, and you know, and I, I know you're new, um, but we, I guess I, I learned from the consultants, I, you know, I, we talk a lot about transparency and I know when we were going through the ECAF debate, I never really saw such a fine example as that of how to do, how to actually enact transparency and to have uh, an authentic discussion on the record uh, with all the pros and the cons and the yeah we hope to yeah we hope to help stimulate that and I think the place we won't wish to start the discussion is yeah. is the facts and the issues and I think that's very helpful okay. I think ultimately that's the best way to do it um, 
I also think it's imperative that we jointly develop, um, and I'm not sure how you feel about this on publicly, but on the record, the decoupling of the ECAF. Um, you know, and I know we've had informal no, yeah, chats on, about on it. On the record, our, our position is simple, and you'll see it stated uh, in the recommendation we make next week. Our base rate should cover all of our long-term controllable costs, uh, ranging from reliability to investment in renewables. Uh, and the only thing that should be passed through are fluctuations in fuel costs, purchase mm -hmm. fuel, which we have no control over. We can obviously hedge and enact other policies to mitigate it somewhat, uh, but coal is what coal is and gas is what gas is. Right. Uh, but other than that, it should all be uh, something which is presented to our commission for approval or disapproval as well as uh, the council. Well, I think that we're on the same track. Um, I'd like to see it broken up into market-driven for fuel and component for RPS and energy efficiency. So I, I think we're generally in agreement on that. So can you uh, direct the department to work with us we on that? We have, and uh, like I said, we'll be making a recommendation on that next week. All right, great. Um, let's see what time it is. All right, so I don't have any other questions for now. Are we set for next week? For uh, the well, second part presentation. Of yes, this. yes, we can move. Okay, and what's set that up as well. Tuesday? Or, uh, yeah, Tuesday, June 15th. Okay, great. And then if we can, if now make it. We have our, our, our commission midday on Tuesday, so any time thereafter, we'd be delighted to come in and sit with you. Um, or we could schedule something later in the week in order to accommodate that if, if you feel appropriate. I will just make sure we get it done for next week. Um, that's my main concern. And. Yeah, it is a two-act play. It's helpful to look at this yeah. in, in yeah. conjunction with the second piece. And yeah. Save your popcorn for the second half. It's a more interesting piece. Okay. Okay. We'll coordinate with the department on the scheduling uh, when they present their budget and so forth. Okay. And have it presented in this committee as well. All right. We still have plenty of time to get that uh, posted. Okay. Good. Um, there is no further questions. Thank you very Thank you. much. And um, anybody wishing to comment on items not on the agenda, this would be the time to do so. Okay. What? Seeing that no one is coming forward, Dr. Williams, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.